this will be my final optimization problem, but believe me, it's worth it because uh, this is going to be just a little bit on the nasty side. Now, I'm going to do this video at least in two parts uh, because the, the time required is just phenomenal, uh, and which makes it a really good problem, by the way. Don't shy away from these types of problems. A uh, component is designed to slide a block of steel with weight W across a table and into a chute. The motion of the block is resisted by a frictional force proportional to its weight, or to its apparent weight. Find the minimum force needed to slide the block, and find the corresponding value of theta. Okay, so now, I did not give you uh, the figure, and so I need to draw this figure out. But essentially, what it comes down to is, if you've ever had physics before, the force diagram, if you haven't had physics before, this is a force diagram. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of draw the situation out. Uh, everything, by the way, is considered to be at the center of mass, and so I'm going to assume that this is a nice normal block here. And so I've got this force coming up. Now, because of this force, I have actually two forces involved. One is pulling to the right, and this is pulling, if this is theta, this is pulling at... And just to justify what I'm doing over over on the side here, uh, if I call this uh, O and I call this A, then the cosine of theta is equal to A over F, which means that A is equal to F cosine of theta. Okay, and so the value of the force running along the x-axis is actually going to be F cosine of theta. And by the same argument, but using sines, this will be F sine theta. It's nothing more than simple trigonometry. All right, so the triangle formed by the forces here work this way. Now, there are other forces that, that are at work. One is weight, and that's pulling straight down. The other is a frictional force that's pulling back against movement. Okay? Now, that frictional force is proportional to its apparent weight. Okay, so this is a proportional to its apparent weight. And I'm just going to write it like this. As we continue with this problem, the very next step is called the summation of forces. Okay, this is something that in, in many math classes is not even attempted, but it is absolutely vital in physics. So we're going to split this up, and we can, because of uh, the normality of the different axes, we have two axes, the x and the y, because they are, they are independent of one another, we can actually take their summation of forces independent of one another as well. So I'm going to look at the summation in the x direction. Now, keep this in mind. We broke down F. F is not together in this. We actually have it in two components. We have the horizontal component and the vertical component. So we want we want to pull this. We want to find the minimum value. So F cosine of theta is equal to, is, is the same as the frictional forces that are pulling back on it. And this is going to be the minimum amount. And that frictional force is K times the apparent weight. Okay, but now if we take a look at y's in the y directions, the apparent weight, and, and, and keep this in mind, if you go to pick something up and it's very heavy, and you can't pick it up but you can slide it, think about, is it easier to pick it up a little bit and slide it, or is it easier to try to pull and slide it? And you'll find out it's actually easier to pick it up to slide it. And so the reason being is, you change its apparent weight by applying an upward force. And so you take its weight and you subtract off the upward force that you exert on it. And so these are the equations that we have to work with. Okay, so just to recap, we're just drawing this thing out. Then we're doing a summation of forces. We're just looking at who's pulling on what, where, and when. And this is all designed from the problem. 
from he, from all of this, we can now start looking at what the force is. And so if we if we look at this, then our force is apparent, and we're going to use we're going to use the x here. The force cosine theta is equal to k times, and now this is w minus f sine theta. Remember, the, up here being the frictional force is um, is equal to k times the apparent weight. Well, the apparent weight is w minus, or is, is the weight minus how much we're lifting it. Okay, so from here, we can simply go ahead and say that if I uh, expand this out, then I have f cosine of theta is equal to k times the weight minus uh, f k sine theta. Working with that, I'm going to switch colors here. We can add uh, this piece to both sides, f k sine theta to both sides. Remember that we're always we're still looking for the force, and so that's going to give us a hint as to where we need to go. F k sine theta. So when we do that, we get f uh, f cosine theta plus f k sine theta is equal to k w. From this point, since I'm looking for the force, I want to factor out the force, and so it's force times cosine theta plus k sine theta is equal to kw, which means that my force is equal to kw divided by the cosine theta plus k sine theta. So that gives me an idea of my force. Now, it doesn't answer the question. The question was, find the minimum of force needed to, and find the corresponding value of theta. Okay, well, that's the minimum force needed right there. And so since that's the minimum force, I need to find the corresponding value of theta. So now I'm going to take df d theta. And so this is going to be a minimum, or at least I hope so. And so now I just need to uh, uh, to work my quotient rule here. The derivative, the first part is the derivative of the top, which thetas are are variable, and so there's no thetas in the top, so it's zero. The derivative of the top times the bottom is zero, minus the derivative of the bottom times the top. Okay, so that's times the top. The derivative of the bottom would be negative sine theta plus k cosine theta all over the bottom squared. Now, if we're looking for a minimum or maximum, then they can only occur at the critical points, which means that our derivative is zero or undefined, and I'm not too worried about it being undefined at this particular moment. And so uh, we're just going to take a look at the top here, and that's negative kw times cos whoop, k cosine theta minus sine theta. And now from here, I can divide through by negative kw. So I get 0 is equal to k cosine theta minus sine theta. This implies that sine of theta is equal to k cosine of theta which means that tangent, if I divide by cosine both sides, tangent theta is k, which means that k, or that, whoop, if I take the arc tangent of both sides, or the inverse tangent, either way you want to look at it, uh, then theta is equal to the arc tangent of k. There's the value of my of my uh, angle that would produce the least force. Now, you could stop here and be done. I'm going to continue this on, and we're going to get rid of the thetas at this point for the force value.